an avid hiking couple from Moscow, Russia, known for their treks through the Karelian forest, found themselves entangled in a criminal investigation, initially rooted in suspected substance distribution. Arrested in March 2021, due to the incriminating evidence found in their instant messaging exchanges. Their case took a shocking turn. As the investigation deepened, the couple disclosed startling confessions that left even seasoned police officers stunned. They spoke of engaging in ritualistic killings, acts of cannibalism, and the brutal murder of two friends. These revelations raised questions. How had their murder spree remained unnoticed for so long? And were there really just only two victims? What first shocked me about this case was the images that I found. The couple seemed to be very much into the shock value of Satanism, judging by the photos that were found. But were they ever really interested? Or was it just an excuse to kill? Or did it drive them to murder? Before we dive in, I want to let you know that I've got a second channel called Grim Tales, where I cover true stories that are shocking but not murderous. If you like watching this content, then I recommend you go check it out. Links to the channel will be in the comments. As ever, if you find this video interesting, please drop it a like at the end. It really helps me out. Thank you. This video is created solely for educational and documentary purposes. It does not endorse or condone the criminal actions described within. Andre Trebrenko and Olga Bolshakova a married couple from Moscow with two young children were embroiled in a substance trafficking operation. They were apprehended in Karelia, Russia, a region where Andre had roots and connections. Law enforcement intercepted their digital communications, pinpointing the delivery location, confirming their identity by tracking IP addresses. This led to their capture and arrest. The potential penalty for their crimes could extend to 20 years in prison, surpassing even the sentence for premeditated murder. After their arrest, they were taken to Petrozavusk, the regional hub where the court ordered pre-trial detention as a precautionary measure, ensuring no collusion they were placed in separate cells. Incarceration brought unexpected revelations. Andre found himself sharing a cell with individuals well-versed in esoteric and occult practices, a domain he and Olga were surprisingly familiar with. Conversations revealed their deep-seated interest in such dark subjects including knowledge of rituals and sacrifices, attempting to bolster his credibility, or perhaps out of a macabre pride. Andre claimed to know the taste of human flesh. Tracing these grisly experiences back to the Karelian forest, these confessions have led authorities to consider a connection with ongoing investigations into missing persons believed by some to be the victims of satanic rituals in a chilling insight into a dark world. In 1987, Andre, known as Andrusia, was born to a respectable family in Moscow, leading a rather unremarkable childhood with his conventional parents. However, in 1999, his parents went through a temporary separation and Andre moved with his father to the quaint village of Chelmazy in Karelia. It is here, amid the transformative years of his adolescence, that he began to experience a shift. By the time he returned to Moscow in 2004, at the cusp of adulthood, 
Andre had undergone a profound transformation, whether it was the result of frequent relocations or the enigmatic influence of the mystical Karelian forest. Andre found himself drawn to the ancient practices of shamanism. He delved into esoteric literature, consulted tarot cards, and gradually came to believe in his own unique mystical abilities. Back in Moscow, Andre didn't take long to gravitate towards others who shared in his esoteric interests. Together, they engaged in sacrificial rituals, claiming to honor Satan, often using black roosters for their ceremonial offerings. They didn't shy away from using their own blood in these rituals, and over time, Andre took his practices a step further, creating artwork painted in his own blood. In his work resume, Andre indicated that in the 2000s, he studied to become a pastry chef, worked as a storekeeper, also as an orderly in the intensive care unit of a hospital, and served in the army. Andre also found work as a tattoo artist, and it was in doing this that he got to know Olga Bolshakova. Olga had wanted a devilish tattoo, and the pair got chatting, but this was not the first time they had met. Olga harbored an early fascination with the unknown and mystical. As a child, she faced the torment of schoolyard bullies, and it was within this sanctuary of the magical world that she found her escape from the harshness of her everyday life. In some aspects, Olga pursued a conventional path, attending a tax academy and securing employment. However, in her private life, she plunged ever deeper into the occult, descending into the shadowy embrace of satanic rites. Her unique interests inevitably drew like-minded individuals to her leading to relationships that further aligned with her dark hobbies. In a fateful turn of events, in 2015, a boyfriend introduced her to a gathering of the Legion of Darkness. It was at this very gathering that she crossed paths with Andre, a moment that would intertwine their destinies in the most profound and eerie of ways. The man Olga was dating did not satisfy her, and quickly, she and Andre were together. On the internet, Andre created an identity known as Cold Void on Satanist forums and social media, a moniker which symbolized his bleak view. His online writings often delved into the macabre topic of human sacrifice and deviant acts. His profile wants an open book of personal interests, such as artistic tattooing, the fine arts, motorcycles, exploration, music, and the study of dead ancient languages. But this has since become a clean slate, suggesting a retreat from his once outspoken persona. Olga, on the other hand, maintains her online presence, albeit selectively. In 2019, she expressed her disdain for conventional thinking, stating, People who think in stereotypes live in a narrow, limited world, clinging to it like a drowning person to a straw. Everything that transcends stereotypical conclusions is cast aside as unreal, non-existent, or simply wrong, regardless of any factual counter-arguments. As Andre delved deeper into the mysteries of the afterlife, it appeared to consume him, becoming the central focus of his existence. His pseudonym, Cold Void, symbolizing, from a satanic perspective, a void within as if he were preparing his soul for some grand yet ominous undertaking. 
seeking broader acceptance within the esoteric communities. He reached out to the St. Petersburg Church of Darkness, an institution spearheaded by Valentin Scar, a figure renowned for his satanic influence. However, satisfying the growing demands of the demon he believed resided within proved to be an increasingly difficult task. Reports suggest that both Andre and Olga became part of the International Occult Satanic Network, known as the Order of the Nine Angels, ONA, which emerged in England during the 1960s and later moved across Europe, eventually penetrating Russia. What drew them to the ONA was the group's philosophical stance that not only justified but encouraged sacrifices, particularly human ones. Eager to find like-minded individuals, their search was swift and soon fruitful. In the early stages of their relationship, Andre and Olga discovered an online community named Legion of Darkness, founded by Vlad Sherny, a former police officer whose career was marred by corruption, resulting in multiple incarcerations. Within this shadowy community, one of the key figures was Victoria McGee, also known by her real name, Victoria Zatsvia, a 27-year-old from Moscow. Victoria was a striking figure, albeit someone whose personal life had seen its share of turmoil. The core of everything is Satan. The crown of all living things is death. This was her motto, which turned from a set of words into an eerie reality. Victoria was one of the administrators for the Legion of Darkness, and every so often, some group members would meet in cafes and they would talk and share ideas. Andre arrived at one of these meetings with an intensity that could not be ignored. He wasn't there to listen, but to hold forth on topics that he found compelling. The devil, the concept of murder, and his grandiose visions of hell. His rhetoric was so extreme that it unnerved even the most experienced of Satanists. Consequently, several members of the club distanced themselves from Andre. They did not believe he stood for what they believed in. However, there were a few who did not turn away. Among them was Victoria. Although Andre had arrived with Olga, they were not sat together in the group, and Victoria just fell in love with him instantly. She was mesmerized by him. Andre's association with the Legion of Darkness didn't produce the outcome he had anticipated, but he did manage to participate in a number of rituals with Olga, Victoria, and a few other devotees. These rituals were intense affairs involving the use of blood, mercury, alcohol, and substances. Andre's ambitions escalated, and during one fateful gathering, he and his cohorts pledged to escalate their commitment through a genuine sacrifice. They all vowed to take a human life. Despite their oath, the group began to fracture under the weight of deciding on a victim, and eventually they disbanded. Under the weight of deciding on a victim, Andre vanished for quite some time after this. When he finally resurfaced, nearly a year later, he had undergone a transformation. He was just as ruthless and inebriated as before, but now he had sharpened his teeth, presumably to resemble the devil more closely. He quickly re-established a relationship with Olga, and they progressed rapidly. Soon, Andre was living with her in Balashika, Victoria still infatuated, remained a peripheral figure in their lives. Andre's fixation on committing a murder still persisted. It wasn't long before Andre had figured out all the grim details. The who, 
the when and the where of his intended act. Andre shared his ominous plan with Olga. He made it clear that Victoria's love was unwavering. All he would have to do is click his fingers and she would be there. With his birthday soon approaching, Andre saw it as an opportunity for the ritual they had sworn to undertake. In preparation, Andre sourced handcuffs and selected a knife with a handle carved from human bone. He extended an invitation to Victoria to accompany him to Karelia. There, he assured her that there were some shamanic places where enormous power is located and some mysterious ritual with sacrifice can be performed. She accepted without hesitation, unaware that Olga would be joining them. Both were jealous of each other because of their feelings for Andre. Olga and Andre ventured ahead into Chelmuzi. They took their time to prepare meticulously, familiarizing themselves with the terrain, even going as far as to dig a grave. Andre then set about constructing what could only be described as an altar, laying the groundwork for the dark ceremony that was to follow. Victoria's mother, during her interview with the criminal investigation officers, recalled that Victoria had seemed ecstatic about her forthcoming trip northward. Despite her daughter's evident joy, the mother found it peculiar that Victoria hadn't packed essentials typically taken on long trips, such as warm clothes or ample food supplies or even shelter. Victoria departed with little more than the clothes on her back, dressed entirely in black, with jeans, a sweatshirt, trainers, and the addition of a small backpack and a chest-worn amulet. Victoria had forewarned her mother about the possibility of a bad phone signal, which initially delayed her mother's worry. It was only after a couple of weeks without contact that her mother's concern peaked, prompting her to contact the authorities. In June 2016, Victoria set off on a journey she believed would be transformative. She prepared her backpack, took out a loan and acquired substances, all in readiness for her departure to Moscow, to the northern reaches of Karelia. With a sense of destiny, she shared with her friends the romantic notion of her lover waiting for her beside a fire in the forest, unaware of the tragic turn her fate would take. Victoria embarked on her fateful journey to Petrozavusk via train, followed by a bus ride to Chelmuzi. Her heart was set on the long-anticipated reunion. Upon arrival, she found Andre in a state of inebriation, a familiar sight as she had rarely seen him sober. She even brought him vodka, reinforcing the tragic pattern of their encounters. Tragically, they walked through the village, trailing a path into the forest that led to a lakeside, their final destination looming ahead. The tranquil scene was shattered by a sudden, violent strike that sent Victoria tumbling to the ground. Gazing up at Andre, her eyes filled with a profound sadness. A grim realization dawned on her. This day would be her last. Overwhelmed by shock, or perhaps still bound by an unyielding devotion, she offered no resistance as the prearranged handcuffs clasped around her wrists. It was then that Olga emerged onto the path and even as the ultimate betrayal unfolded, Victoria could not accept it. Olga and Andre escorted their unresisting victim to the brink of the pre-dug grave. Victoria remained silent, devoid of screams or pleas, seemingly resigned to her fate. She awaited the commencement of the so-called sacred ritual with a belief that the devil would not abandon her. 
tied and on the floor. Andre, the man Victoria loved, pulled out his knife carved from bone and he kissed her as he stabbed her in the neck. He was still kissing her when blood began to gush from her neck. Andre cut some of Victoria's flesh from her thigh. He then begins to deliver a speech in a ritualistic manner. He then proceeds to boil her flesh in a small pan on the campfire whilst drinking vodka. Olga is the one who buries her remains in the grave. In a haunting display of detachment from the brutality of their actions, Andre took to Instagram the day after the grim event. He used a dedicated account, one he had specifically set up for the trip to post images of the clearing and the fire. Among the photographs was one showing a pot over the coals, in which meat porridge was cooking, a dark reminder of the act they had committed. The casual nature of the post, juxtaposed with the violence of the previous day, painted a chilling picture of Andre's psyche. A few days following their horrendous act, Andre and Olga retreated to their normal lives in Moscow, but Andre was filled with conflicting emotions. Fear of being discovered for the atrocity lay heavy on his mind, yet there was an overwhelming urge to boast about fulfilling his dark oath to his fellow Satanists. It was his addiction to alcohol, described as his main demon, that tipped the scales in an alcohol-fueled lapse, the veil over the secret was lifted almost immediately. Also, Victoria's absence did not go unnoticed. She had been vocal about her journey to Karelia, and her failure to return added a sinister significance to her disappearance. Yet somehow, Andre and Olga were never questioned by authorities. It was reported that during the summer of 2016, the couple went on hikes numerous times after the first killing. But up to now, from the testimony from Andre, we only know how one of them ended. The August trip. This time, Olga acted as the bait. In the summer of 2016, in St. Petersburg, 27-year-old Planton Stepanov reconnected with an old friend, Olga. Their friendship had been kindled by a mutual interest in the occult and visiting mysterious locations. Olga reached out to him in June, though their plans to meet didn't materialize. Then, a month and a half later, she appeared again, this time with Andre. She invited Platon to join them on a trip to Przersk, and he accepted the invitation. Platon was among those who sought to explore a deeper part of himself. Informing his family, Plato, for short, mentioned that he would be embarking on a hiking trip with some acquaintances from Moscow, located in the Przersk district. This area, set approximately 150 kilometers north of St. Petersburg, lies along the scenic banks of Lake Ladoga. Come August, Plato got off the train and made his way to the campsite. Olga was with unfamiliar companions and they were there to greet him. The companions were another couple, there for the ritualistic murder. They were a rock musician, Alexander Pervoshikov Kumuri, and his girlfriend, Tatiana. Plato looked forward to the days ahead, filled with rituals, deep conversations, and the raw thrill of adventurous tourism. The anticipation hung heavy in the air, but this was never going to happen. Plato was caught off guard by a sudden, sharp blow. Disorientated, he struggled to comprehend what had just occurred as a ringing noise filled his ears and a sharp pain radiated across his chest. As his vision cleared, he saw two figures approaching. Among them, he recognized Andre. A flurry of blows followed, 
and before Plato could react, ropes were being secured around him. In moments, he was rendered immobile, a helpless victim to the unfolding situation. The four people dragged Plato across the ground to position him near a stone, seemingly preparing to recite some form of ritual. Olga, holding a knife, drew it across Plato's throat, inflicting a wound that appeared superficial. Then, Andre took the knife from her. In her later testimony, Olga would say that her action was not the fatal one, insisting that Plato did not die by her hand. Plato died after his throat was cut with a ritual dagger. He was also stabbed directly in the heart. His murder was also accompanied by ritual actions and cannibalism. The killers collected Plato's blood into a pre-prepared bowl and read a satanic prayer to complete the ritual. They then boiled the blood on the fire, followed by each drinking some. All four played a big part in his murder. Tatiana would later state, the meaning of this whole action was to appeal to the dark forces. The next morning, the occultists cut a piece of meat from the corpse near the ribs. They then cooked the meat over an open flame and ate it. It was noted that it was Tatiana who dug up the body in order to taste human flesh. Like Victoria, Plato is reported missing, but nothing happens. Andre and Olga had their first child, a daughter, a year after the summer murders of 2016. And a couple of years later, they had a second child. Despite the dark shadow cast by their actions, it appeared that the couple continued their ventures into the wilderness, as shown by the photographs on Olga's social media. These postings suggested that their excursions into nature remained a regular part of their lives. But reportedly, by this time, the couple had lost interest in sacrifices and became involved in substance trafficking. According to the prosecution, they purchased small quantities of strong substances through the dark net, packaged them into single doses and tried to distribute them through so-called bookmarks, a term used to describe hidden stashes of substances that buyers would retrieve based on provided coordinates or clues. Once the couple were arrested and Andre had confessed to the crimes, all four of the killers were quickly in custody. Once in the pre-trial detention center, the accused Olga entered into a pre-trial cooperation agreement with the prosecutor's office with the understanding of which she admitted guilt in substance trafficking and reported her involvement in the ritual murder of Victoria. And Olga admitted they made the second sacrifice in the company of another couple. For five years, investigators diligently sought concrete evidence to substantiate the rumors swirling within the Satanist circles that the murders had taken place. Their search for the truth is ongoing. Andre and Olga have pinpointed the specific locations where they buried the victims. In an effort to corroborate their testimonies, authorities escorted the couple to the sites of the murders for verification. Due to Olga cutting a deal, she was given a 12-year sentence. The other three perpetrators, Andre, Alexander and Tatiana, are still awaiting sentencing. Andre is also under investigation for a third murder after he reportedly converted to Islam and attacked someone who did not agree with his beliefs, killing them in the process. In the wake of their confessions, Andre and Olga have presented conflicting narratives. Olga has accused Andre of drawing her into the world of substances and the consequent murders, while Andre vehemently denies these accusations. In a public statement, Andre's sister defends her brother, suggesting that Olga is attempting to deflect blame onto him. His sister portrays Andre as a man who is not marred by such dark endeavors, 
but instead characterised by his work as a chef and his interests in motorbikes. A stark contrast to the life he led after meeting Olga. Individuals suspected of being accomplices to the murders were interrogated. Some ended up being released whilst others remained in custody. However, a lingering question hangs over the investigation because Andre and Olga had been at large for five full years after the murders. Is it possible that there's more victims? In the midst of this, the couple's two children, with their parents serving long-term prison sentences, were sent to live with their grandmother on Olga's side. Thank you for watching. Until next time, stay sane.